guys down here on the south coast again uh, the weather has been um, not so great it's been very windy so we haven't done a lot of flying but uh, recently we've had some lovely weather so time to get out and get a few hours up now while we've had such ordinary weather we have spent a bit of time on YouTube picking my favorite pilots as I'm sure you have as well and one of the things that, that's occurred to me is, is um, how many fatal accidents there have been lately. There were three things that seem to be prevalent with these fatalities recently. Firstly, the fudged go-around. So people are landing, they're, they're either coming in uh, too slow, too fast, they're bouncing. They're still in, in uh, landing configuration trim is for for up for landing flaps are down going slow suddenly jumping on full power with these powerful airplanes and the rv-14 is one of these we've got a 210 horsepower the the total weight of the plane is under a ton um, so what is what happens in the configuration landing configuration it just wants to pitch up now your maneuvering speed is very low so what do we do we end up stalling it dropping a wing spinning into the ground killing people very easily the second one that seemed to, to come up a bit was the engine failure on takeoff I mean we're all aware of this one where you're, you're powering up you're going at your your rate of climb might be whatever it is mine's uh, about 90 knots um, and then suddenly your engine fails you're in a climb attitude and your airspeed drops off straight away what do we do we have to drop the nose immediately we need to get that nose down get to zero G's you can't stall a plane in zero G's this is one of the things that uh, one of the YouTubers mentioned Dan Grider um, who you might not have seen fantastic fella you either love him or hate him but um, he reports very soon after accidents and he, he, he really has a, a kind of a forensic approach to to these accents which is good the other one is Juan Brown from Blanco Lirio he also puts these accents up fairly soon and, and they discuss it and, and and it's very useful to us pilots and I'd encourage you to go and have a look at those two guys as, as well as lots AOPA does a lot of these fantastic things so the second one I was mentioning is is when we're in that configuration Dan Grider does some with flight chops another youtuber um, he goes through this he they do it practically and uh, see how the airplane reacts and how we react um, when these things happen because you know it's something if we don't we're not practicing that moment's hesitation could be the end of us and we don't want that to happen so very important the other one which is also fairly common is turning onto finals from base when we're getting low and slow and maybe pitching up a bit too much getting distracted maybe talking to ATC turning uh, dropping your wings using too much rudder getting into a stall spin so one of the big things that Dan Grider talks about is minimum maneuvering speed I've had a look at my manual and there is nothing about minimum maneuvering speed most GA pilots if you look in your manual it's got um, design maneuvering speed in the RV 40 it's 130 knots that's great but for turbulence and all sorts of things very important but the thing is with minimum maneuvering speed that's the one where we go too slow and we end up in stalls and spins and so on and it's critical that everybody understands the minimum maneuvering speed now if you look at Dan Grider he's he demonstrated very well with with one of the other guys I watch flight chops and there's a simple equation so what you have to do is you have to look at your stall speed in the RV for example uh, VSO which is flaps down is 51 knots and that's usually the configuration for for slow flight so let's let, let's look at that all you do is you multiply it by a factor of 1.404 and I come up with 76 knots 
Now that's a, a speed that I must not turn the wings at more than 30 degrees. In other words, too much maneuvering. If you do that, you can expect to get yourself into a lot of trouble. And what he tends to do is marks it on, on the, um, the dash with a bit of tape. Something like that, very important. Having lost his student and friend Brock and his colleague Leo to almost identical accidents, Dan was highly motivated to find a solution to this problem that GA seems to have, which the airlines have solved. It's always one of the four, loss of thrust on takeoff, a messed up go around, inadvertent IMC after takeoff specifically, and maneuvering in the traffic pattern is one of these four. That's when we're, we're under our highest susceptibility of losing another general aviation airplane. Okay, that's it from now. See you at Shell Harbor Airport tomorrow and we will put Julia Tango up. See you then. Okay guys, good morning, beautiful day. Um, so to recap what we uh, finished up last night with that little chat, um, we're going to look at those those three safety maneuvers. Um, I will say, I'm not an instructor. I'm far from it. Um, I'm one of those pilots that falls into that very comfortable 300 hour category. We start to feel like we're bulletproof and this is probably the most dangerous time. So anybody out there um, in that sort of situation, this could be very useful. Uh, welcome comments and criticisms alike. Uh, but. Uh, Certainly a lot of these moves, the, um, the stall spins and things, please don't try those unless you have aerobatics uh, endorsements or you're with an instructor. So just to recap, that um, important number that we discussed last night, the DMMS, our VO, which we know is 51, so uh, times up by 1.404, come up with 72 knots with flaps down, so 72 knots. Uh, so that is the most important speed not to maneuver, put those wings below 30 degrees when we're in that slow configuration. Uh, without flaps, uh, clean, we're talking about BSI is 62, and so our DMMS would be 87. So in the circuit before flaps come down, 87 is our minimum. All right, without further ado, I think we're warm enough now. Let's uh, make a call. Shell Harbour traffic, Ivy Ford and Julia Tango Oscar is uh, lining up, rolling, rolling 3-4, crosswind departure, uh, making a right turn for the coast, Shell Harbour. Alright, here we go. So, if we have an engine failure on takeoff, we will lower the nose immediately and land ahead of us within 30 degrees. We will not attempt a go around unless we're over 800 feet. So let's get right into it. So one of the, the first things that I was talking about was the engine failure on initial climb out. Um, and this is where what we should be doing is lowering no, the nose immediately to give us any chance at all. Make a little turn. We're going to use 3500 as our hard deck. So we're going to try and, there, we, there it comes now. We're going to try and get our speed up to Rotating at 70 and then maintain that 80. See if we can have a failure before. Okay, so here we go. Let's get a bit higher up. There we go, there we go. Just about stalling Engine here. With monitor. Four. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we're going to go. Okay, rotating, up we go. Engine. We're going to go at, keep it at 80. This is great, so we're at 700. And whoop, engine failure. Um, hang on. Uh, yeah, uh, let's try and get back to the airport. Um, oh, gee. Oh, here we go. Shell Harbour traffic. Oh, let's pull out of here. Oh, we've hit the ground. We are toast, guys. We are toast. So, there, there's an example. Just a hesitation and um, sadly death. We wouldn't have been able to recover that. I did throw in a bit of left rudder, but I suppose to get around quickly if you're going to try and do the, um, the turn back, that's what happens. Now, forget the hard deck, let's just do it. We're, we're going to climb at, at 80 knots, have an engine failure, and do what we should do. So we're at 87 now, let's just point the nose up. Full throttle. There's 84. 83. Let's say we're about uh, 500 feet now. Throttle dies. Nose down, guys. There it is. And now we're going to just glide in and find 
a safe place. Within 30 degrees, we can maneuver at this speed. We, our speed's at 90, and now we can get back to our best glide speed if we've got a bit of space, or we can flare. That was that exercise. There's only a few seconds to make that decision, guys. Push that stick over. All right. So the next one was, of course, the uh, turn on to final. Let's go 3,900. So there we are. We've hit the circuit height. We're, we just started our downwind. Uh, 74. Booster pump is on. It's at 4,082 knots. We're going to turn base. Left base, turning base. And we're just going to... Boat down, there's 77, that's okay, it's a little bit slow, 80, 85 is my preferred turning onto base. So we want it, we're dropping now, 390. Okay, I'll ask you, is 5 to the north now. And now we want to, we've got it down to 72. And we're just not thinking properly, a little bit low, so we're getting a bit slow here, 62, and we're going to turn on to, with aileron and, and whoop. Okay, so wing drops. Think about that turning on to finals, just make sure you always check your speed. Laps are away. And up we go. Cheese. And we're there, and let's fly it. Bit of right, right on. And let's go. downwind. Nice. I'm going to maintain about 80 down here. Alright, so we're ready. I'm going to flare the prop. Fix. Booster pump. Brakes. Instruments. We're all good. Alright, we're going to get over the threshold. A little quicker than usual. We're going to have it here at uh, 75. All right, we're going to float a bit. And, and here we go. And boom, boom, whoa. Okay. Monitor. There it is. Engine. Monitor. There it is. And up we go.
right guys hope you enjoyed that bit of fun bit bumpy up there but um yeah put those into practice or at least have a good think about them we all want to be safe we want our flying community to be safe so have fun fly safely and i'll see you on the next one cheers bye guys <laughs>